Hello, I'm Hingers, and welcome to Good Game Well Played, your weekly guide to esports, esports, and also this cup. Mmm, empty. <laughs> Today on the show, we're going to be chatting to Chris Sigarty, executive producer of Blizzard's new brawler, Heroes of the Storm. But first, let's do a roundup of the big esports stories of the week. In CSGO news, Fnatic coach Jonathan Devilwalk Lundberg plans to step down from his role to make a return to competitive gaming away from Fnatic. He will be replaced by Victor Vugo Yendebi, who has previously worked with Fnatic at ESL1 Katowice. In a statement released earlier this week, Fnatic's CGO Patrick Khan Satamon thanked Devilwalk and described him as one of the best, if not the best coach on the planet. Meanwhile, in League of Legends news, esports betting website Unicorn has pledged to sponsor any professional LCS team with a woman on their roster. The pledge was made by Unicorn founder Rahul Sud on his blog on Monday, before League of Legends caster Monte Cristo pointed out on Twitter that Unicorn is ineligible to sponsor LCS teams because of its association with gambling. However, there are suggestions that Sud will get around this by sponsoring the team personally. Finally, a gambling mogul putting their ill-gotten money towards good. Speaking of people with mountains of cash, Valve have announced they will be taking all major Dota 2 tournaments in-house and will only be coordinating with external groups for broadcast purposes. According to the Daily Dot, this goes against Valve's initial announcement which explicitly stated they would be working with third-party organisers. Community members are now worried that with Valve's dominance of Dota 2 events, there will be fewer and fewer incentives for third parties to organise tournaments at all. All right, that's it for the news. Let's head into the Nexus. So we're here right now with Chris Sigarty. Hi. Thanks for having me. Now you've worked at Blizzard for almost 20 years on a bunch of esports titles, including uh, StarCraft 2, II, WarCraft 3, and now Heroes of the Storm. Uh, can you chat a bit about Blizzard's relationship with esports and how it's changed over the years? The history goes back really to StarCraft and really to um, WarCraft 2 even before that. We had a lot of really passionate competitive gamers through the internet, through LAN basically, and that sort of fast forwarded into what happened with StarCraft, with the original StarCraft, and StarCraft was in the right place, right time, and it was a very competitive game, and, and over time became very well balanced. And in this game that we loved, we thought it was a great game, we thought it was competitive, suddenly turned into something much more than I think we anticipated. Um, and that really opened our eyes to what, what does it really mean to make a competitive game, especially if it's going to be called a sport, really. And um, that's when the terms started being thrown around, and we started to really embrace it and, and understand it as uh, something that we should really invest in, really think about a lot more than we had as we developed the original StarCraft. Were you surprised at all with the response that Heroes of the Storm has gotten, like building this huge competitive community around it? I don't know if we were surprised. I mean, I think if you go out and claim that you've got the next competitive game, um, you could be eating your words. You need, to, you need to see it and feel it out, and the community very much shows you it, you know, through their gameplay. We're clearly trying to make a very competitive game. We're trying to make a game that's very well balanced. That's always at the root of, of our goals. But whether it can turn into something that you can deem an eSport, I think the community has to embrace it. And so while we did try to make the game balanced and do all of those things, um, it really came through at the end here as we were heading towards open beta during the closed beta portion. We started seeing a lot of streaming, a lot of competitive gaming that different companies were doing, different individuals were hosting, and they were very exciting to watch. And that was critical. Uh, so there was the balance part of it, there was the you know, core game philosophy part of it, but there's this whole, is it fun to watch? Do we think it's fun to watch? Wow, yes. Does the community, do the players who are playing the game think it's fun to watch? And we were getting a lot of positive feedback there. I think the real evidence, for, for me at least, happened at uh, something that we had a, about a month and a half ago called Heroes of the Dorm. And that was something that was um, US focused at the time. Our goals around it were very much about creating a conversation around esports. And so this is something we did in partnership with ESPN. Welcome back to the Heroes of the Door. We are in the final game of the finals. It's been back and forth. It's not clear who's gonna win. I'm interested in that. Like, how did it feel to watch this game that you'd spent so much time producing and working on suddenly being broadcast on ESPN and having like people who had never thought about esports or thought about video games before you know, having this thing flooding into their living rooms and, you know, because there was a huge reaction, right? Some people were, like, really excited about it. Other people were like, what is this? You know? Yeah. yeah. It was super exciting. It was, like, like I said, it was one of my favorite events 
uh, ever at, at the history for me at my history at Blizzard. And part of it was the actual event itself, was how exciting it was, how the crowd was reacting and all of those things. But the other thing was the conversation that started. And this is on a television channel that has not, at least on, on traditional television, has not broadcast esports at all. And an immediate dialogue started. And that was the exciting thing to me. That, we've been winning. Um, we, the gaming community, have been winning at esports now ac uh, across many years, really starting since um, 1998 uh, through Korea, branching out into all these different regions, back into uh, the States, into Australia, New Zealand, et cetera. Um, but there's still a large bit of the, po of the worldwide population that's unaware of this, or they think it's still this uh, niche thing. Mm. And we know it's not. And we know that uh, I think traditional television isn't necessary for esports, but it certainly helps. And I, and I think that dialogue that started, and yes, there was some very interesting um, uh, <laughs> I guess reactions from people that were going, "What is this on my, you know, on my sports channel?" <laughs> and then there were some really positive things. I, I remember seeing from some uh, particular sports personalities, um, some of them that have their own shows and things that said, "I don't know what I'm watching, but it's so exciting." Yeah, I saw those and tweets. It, and yeah. it was just, it was so cool to see that. Oh shit! Nuclear launch detected. How do you go about? balancing a game for such a, a huge scope of play. We look at how frequently heroes are being played, um, what the win percentage is with particular heroes on particular maps. Um, that's our starting point. And then the community, both a new player community and pro esports community, and any in all the degrees in between, we try to monitor as best we can. So we are watching basically everything that's going on out there, and, and that helps steer the decisions we make with the changes, and we are changing balance all the time. I think with Heroes a little bit more so than StarCraft, we do want there to be some of that chaos. Mm -hmm. and, it, and it sort of just happens when you've got five, five different players on each team, each with different heroes, each with different abilities, each with their own talent trees that, that they're picking as you play through the game. So it already leads to a very chaotic experience. You have to do your best to know. We, we do want skill ultimately to win, um, but that skill is different in Heroes than StarCraft. There is very little random, uh, really no skill. Um, it can be the tiniest detail that happens even in the comp that is playing against the, the makeup of the team that you're playing against or, your, or the makeup of your team um, and how you guys play together. So largely still skill is there at the base, but we do want a sense of chaos, I think more so with Heroes than we've, we've seen with StarCraft 2, certainly. Do you have anything exciting planned for the esports side of Heroes of the Storm? Yeah, I think the big, most exciting news is we, we just recently announced Road to BlizzCon. That is the opportunity in 2015 um, for eSports that ties to, to Heroes of the Storm. And then the exciting news that's a part of that is we've got a $25,000 prize pool here for the ANZ qualifier uh, wow. that, that qualify you into the America's Finals. And if they can win there, they win a place to, at BlizzCon. Um, it would be great to see somebody from Australia and New Zealand uh, make it that far. Great. Um, well, thank you so much for chatting to us today. Thank you very much for having me. It's awesome to be here in Sydney, so <laughs> thanks so much. That is it for today. Let us know if you've gotten into the Heroes of the Storm Pro scene and the matches you've enjoyed. Until next week, Higgins out. See ya!